Hello everybody. Here we are. Another day. I hope the notification is going out already. Yeah. Okay. We are welcoming the first person to greet us tonight. And who is that person going to be? Let's wait and see. It might be Shegun Fatuma. I think I can prophesy. No, I got it wrong today. This is uh, Bill Muna Prosper, Ludovic, Bosse, then Tiger. It means Shegun Fatuma is out doing something today. Alexis, Olukemi, Faith, Abby. Kie, wow, Kie, what a name. Mayo, what blessings. Shola, oh, Shola Adele, wow, you've disappeared. You shouldn't disappear like that. How is Texas? Bobo, South Africa, blessings. Solola Shorunke, California. Ibans, Ikeshuku, Mansa. Okay, Pat Osaro. Dr. Bien Sufficient. I know that one. This is another name. It used to be sweet something. Or oh, it used to be purity something. Purity, purity something. Samuel Uduro. Prophet Juan. Shegun Olorunwa. That is my name, Olorunwa. Ayodeji. <laughs> Nicole. Ikemufuna. Jeremiah. Amarashi. Gloria, Consolata, wow, Consolata, what a name, wow, Kina, Mike Amadi, blessing Mike Amadi, Sheyisa, Chris, Pastor Mitch, Shidi, Everson, Steve Sam, Galina Kirishenka, I know you, Theodora, Fumi Adewusi, Marcus Bailey, Tracy Moshe. Well, welcome everyone. You are becoming too many now. We will not be able to introduce all of you. But as we are coming in, can I ask you all to, can I ask you please to go ahead and, you know, share your the link. Please look for your link. Look for your link button. And uh, let's share that link and invite people to come and join us. Okay, let's go and share the link, please. Let's go share the link. And uh, once we do that, we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to go. So please, go to find your share button. And let's share that link and invite as many people as possible to come join us. Let's invite as many people as possible to come join us, okay? Are you ready for that? Okay, here we are. Let's go. So today... I'm talking on the topic, where are the mighty men? Where are the mighty men? Men are needed to accomplish anything on the earth, especially mighty men. In the church today, we lack mighty men. We are in need of mighty men. We don't have enough of mighty men. But unfortunately, the definition that we give to the men of God today, I'm not sure it is the same definition that God would have given to people that he calls men of God. Today, we just call anybody men of God if they are pastors, or if they are preachers, or if they are doing a good thing. They, we don't call people men of God just because they are carrying the Bible. Or we call men of God because they have big churches. Or we call people men of God because they are famous. Or we call them men of God because they are on television somewhere, because they are preaching, because they, you know, we just call everybody men of God. But in the real sense, I think the people that were called men of God were the mighty men, mighty men, mighty men. So today I want to tell us about what I understand, to, or who I understand that should be called mighty men. And, uh, and, and we need to look for them, and we need to identify them, and also... I call on them, I mean, call, challenge ourselves to become these mighty men. Because the mighty men, mighty men are the people who make a difference. Like Jesus was a mighty man. And that was a beautiful thing. Because Jesus proved with his results, not just with his life, but with his results. He didn't just have the acclamation, 
But he had the result. He had the proof to prove that he was a mighty man indeed. Jesus was a mighty man. And um, he was a mighty man in God because he... Uh, he was the son of he was the son of God, or he's the son is the son of God, but he was you know, second in the Godhead. So he has a lot of things that he had that could make him the mighty a mighty man. But Jesus did not just depend on his acclamation to be or his position or his title to be the might to call himself mighty man. But he became the mighty man because of his accomplishments. He became the my mighty man because of the results he had. Today, he, he started the biggest you know, Christian organization, the, the religious organization in the world. Today, he's the most recognized stable name. He's the biggest, you know, God, Jesus is the mighty man in all things. In all things, he's, the mighty, he's a mighty man. But every mighty man is only mighty if he's able to duplicate himself. The, 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 the greatness, every great, great man is only great by how much he's able to duplicate himself. The greatness of even Jesus Christ could be measured by how much he was able to duplicate himself. So a great leader is not really great if we are only measuring him by what he has done. Every great man is great at the end of the day only by not just what he has accomplished by himself, what he could accomplish on his own, but by what he could accomplish when he's no more there, by what he could accomplish uh, when he's gone, and especially by what his disciples could accomplish. So a great man will always give birth to great men. A great man will always give birth to mighty men like himself. And Jesus is a perfect example of that. When he left, that is when his work exploded. So what will happen when we are not here determines if we are really truly great or not. And uh, uh, Jesus was also a mighty man because he raised mighty men. If, if you are going to look at the people that came up after Jesus that were disciples and followers of Jesus, you will see that they were indeed mighty men. People like Paul. Paul was a mighty man on his own. He was a mighty man, but he was raised by Jesus. Jesus identified him, called him, gave him the calling. P Peter. Peter is another person. Oh, wow. I'm a little bit tired today. <laughs> Peter is another person that was a, another mighty man. And um, all the disciples, all, these, all the disciples and in the, the, in the fathers of the church all throughout history, we see a, a, a myriad of a list of a mighty list of mighty men that accomplished and did great things for God and are still doing great things for God because they believe in one leader, in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been a long day, isn't it? It's been a long day. Uh, you could tell, you could tell by me looking at me, that, uh, ah, this guy, this guy has had a busy day. Yeah? You could tell, you could tell. Mm -hmm. You're right. I still have that body. But they, but they need some support, <laughs> like some water sometimes, you see. Anyway, so, <laughs> so Jesus was a mighty man because of the result he produced. And Jesus was a man of God because the results he produced were, 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 were you know, he demonstrated that he was a man of God. He produced men after himself. He produced other men of God as well. So um, what, am I, why am I, what am I trying to say today? Um, the topic of today is where are the mighty men? And today, I would frankly say that we lack mighty men. And not mighty men in the sense that we have religiously uh, called people to be. Not mighty men in the sense that they are just pastors. We say, man of God, man of God. No, I'm talking about great men. I'm talking about mighty men. We need to believe God for, to raise up more mighty men. But sometimes we, we make it so religious. We believe God to raise mighty men. And that means as if it's only God that could raise up mighty men. As if we are the ones waiting on God to raise up mighty men. But it's wrong. We don't need to wait on God to raise up mighty men. We ourselves we have been given the seed of greatness in us. The nature of God is already in us. God is already dwelling in us. We should not put a limitation on the fact that we cannot have great men because we are waiting for God until God raises up another one. That is the way the church had taught 
about these kind of things that, okay, we have to pray and wait that God will raise. I think God has already raised everybody up. God already put his nature in us. God already put his seed in us. What could be greater than that? What, what, is, a, what is a greater requirement than that, that what you already have? We already have God living in us. If God is already living in you, what, order, what greater requirement do you need to become a man of God? What greater you know, requirement do you need to become a great man, a mighty man for God? If God, the greatest and the mightiest of all, has come to live and to dwell in you, it means that every one of us, if we really so desire, if we really want to praise God, if we really want to glorify God, if we really want to serve God, we all could become mighty men for God. We all could become great men for God. If the Bible says, yes, all that what is saying here, the Bible already says you are God's. If God is already saying you are God, what else do you need to become a mighty man? What else do you need to become a great man? We have all that is required. All that is required is that we believe in what God said we are. All that is required is that we take God by his word. All that is required is that we say, yes, Lord, I believe you. I mean, God himself said that the works that I have done, that greater works shall you do. He didn't just say that to a few people. He said all of us would do greater works than he has done. So why should we make this a big deal that only a few people can become men of God? Only a few people can become great men? No. The truth is that all of us can do the same work that Jesus has done and even greater men, greater works can be done by all of us. All of us could become great men, great men for God. Where are the mighty men? He, the mighty man is waiting inside of you. The mighty man is living inside of you. The mighty man is living inside of each one of us. The mighty man oh, is in us. We just need to uh, uh, wake up that mighty man in us. The son of God is in us. The almighty God is in us. We just need to wake him up. We need to awake the giant that is in us. We need to awaken the sleeping giant. We all can become mighty men. But the way you know, I, what I see or happening today in the churches of the world is that everybody is bowing down. We are trying to honor and to worship some so, so quote unquote men of God, men of God, big deal, men of God. So we carry their bags, we carry their Bibles, we, we go after them, we let them go in front, we all line up behind them, we behave, we fear, we fear them, we go to them for miracles, we tell them to pray for us, we tell them to anoint us, to lay hands on us, to release us into ministry. And you know, there was even a time that some people were asking me, who released you into ministry? I said, what do you mean who released me to ministry? Who supposed to release me to ministry? Ah, what do you mean? Who released you? They said, oh, who is your father? Who fathered you? In what sense? Who fathered you to become a minister? How can somebody father you to become a minister? I got saved. I got a calling. I had a conviction that God is calling me. I love God. I wanted to glorify him. I, you know, know that I want to live for him. That's all. Why should somebody necessarily have to be there to now release me or father me to, when Jesus Christ is already in me himself? What could be greater than that? What could be greater than Jesus? How could you be waiting for somebody to release you when God has already said, go ye therefore into all the world? He already told you to go. Why should you be waiting for somebody to come and still release you? Are you, are you serious? Are you kidding me? God has already said, you go. And now you are waiting and say, ah, maybe somebody will come and release me. Ah, okay. <laughs> Who are you believing? Who are you believing? If God, heaven, the creator of heaven and earth is telling you to go, and you are sitting, what kind of a child are you? Are you serious? Are you in trouble? You want to put yourself in trouble? God is saying, go ye therefore. And you are saying you are waiting for somebody. What? Ordination. Who told you about ordination? Where is that word written? If you, you know, just need to take these things simple. Just take things simple. So somebody said, who was your father? I said, nobody. I just, you know, I came, I got saved six months into my 
uh, salvation experience. I left the country. I never had a pastor anymore from there. I never was a church member. I had a Bible with me. <laughs> and I left for communism. That's it. I never was a church member in my whole life. I never had a pastor in my whole life. Officially. Because the church that I attended when I got saved for six months, they never took me to be a member. Because you needed to attend for a longer period before you, before you could become a member. I didn't qualify. Thank God. <laughs> so they will say, who anointed you? Who sent you? Who released you to ministry? <laughs> there is a little bit of truth in the sense that you have to, you know, you could be mentored or you have to have a leader. But don't wait for that. You could submit yourself to some people, so a pastor or a leader, but that, you know, we shouldn't use that as, oh my God, we, we have just messed up the whole thing because we are now looking up for some men before we could please God. How could you be waiting for men before you could please God? God is waiting on you to please him. God is waiting, eagerly waiting for you to please him. God is saying, who shall we send? God is saying, who shall we send? He, does, he has crisis of who to send. And we are now saying, well, until somebody anoints me, until somebody blesses me, I cannot go and do God's work. What about if there's nobody to bless you? And there are a lot of people who are supposed to be doing great work for God are sitting in their churches or, and, their, and in their pews and are saying, well, they have not anointed me yet, or they have not concentrated me yet, or they have not uh, ordained me yet. If they don't ordain me, I cannot do anything. That's a disgrace. I'm sorry. That is just a disgrace. God has already said, go ye therefore and make disciples. Go ye. Go, go and work for him. Go and please him. And you don't have to just have to go and become you know, a preacher. You don't have to go and start another church. Go ye, therefore, into the world. The world is God's, is God's target. God is targeting the world. God is targeting, you know, the marketplace. God is targeting the spheres of influence. God is targeting the mountains, like I spoke this morning. So, Jesus was a mighty man of God. And, you know, he, 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 he was pursuing his purpose. And, but every mighty man is only mighty when he raises up and not other mighty men. Every man of God is only mighty when he raises up mighty men, when he raises up great men like himself. And Jesus qualified for this. And, and he made that very clear from the very beginning. And the, one of the very purposes of, of the purpose for which the church was created, for which the church was formed, is that church should be raising up mighty men for God. Church has to be raising up men and women that will be strong enough to change the world for Christ. That is the reason why God is raised up the church. The church should be a place for raising up mighty men. The church should be a place for raising up great men. The church should be raising up sons and people that will go and reclaim back the earth for God. People who will go and reclaim back the earth for God. So what did Jesus, how did Jesus start his ministry? Jesus went out and said, and saw people, his disciples, he saw them fishing, and he told them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They were fishers of fish. They were fishermen. They were fishing for fish. And God said, I'm going to follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. What that means is, every pastor, every leader that is starting out, we should give, we should make sure that Every, we, don't, we don't just have fun. You see, Jesus' goal was not to have members. Jesus' goal was not to conserve people in his church. Jesus' goal was not to gather people, a crowd, and just make them follow him and make himself become the man of God. The great man. Look at me. See how many people follow me? I'm cool. I am the great man. You help me. Help me, King Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. The, no, no. He was not gathering people just to give himself 
some self-image. He was not gathering people just to give himself reputation. He was not gathering people just to, you know, give, build himself a great status. That was not the goal of Jesus. He was, he were, each time he was gathering people, he was calling them, he was immediately identifying their purpose. He was immediately identifying their destiny. He was immediately pointing out to them who he was going to make them to be. So, God's intention was not about God himself. I mean, Jesus' intention was not about his own ministry. Jesus' intention was not to build his, himself his own ministry. Jesus' intention was to ask, you know, to help these people build their own ministry. Jesus' intention was to say, follow me as you are following me, I will make you into somebody. Anybody that is following you, anybody that is a member of your church, must be able to know who you are making him to. You must have some assurance that you are giving the person. If anybody is, has decided to come to your church, it is your duty. The onus is on you as the pastor to make sure that anybody that is following after you becomes somebody. And it's not just to become somebody on the same level that he was when he came to you. He must become greater person. Can you you imagine these people that in Jesus meant they were just fisher men, fisher of fish. But Jesus said, by you following me, you will have a great destiny. I promise you a great destiny. You following me alone will convert your destiny. You following me alone will change your future. It, it will change your, your, your faith, your destiny. You will become greater than you could ever imagine. Jesus' idea, Jesus' dream for everybody that was following him was a dream of greatness. He was dreaming of greatness for all these people, for each and every one of them. So when they came to him, he immediately pronounced to them that greatness that he was planning for them. He immediately told them who they were going to become. It was not a wishy wish washy. It was not maybe you become, maybe you don't become, we don't know what will happen to you. No, it was a, a purposeful thing, an intentional thing. That is what every pastor should be doing today. Oh my God, this is so much far away from what is obtainable today. This is so much far away from what is happening today. We don't even think today. People don't even think about who you are going to become. People are rather thinking of how to make you, how to use you to become who I want to become. People are rather, the pastors and leaders are rather thinking how to use you that I will become great. How to use your resources, how to use your connection, your money, your tithe, your offering, so that you will build my ministry, my church. That is what is happening today. But Jesus was not even thinking of how to use them to build his own ministry or his own, own self. He was talking and thinking of how he wants to you know, make them into somebody. He was telling them about his agenda for them, his purpose for them, his intention for them, what he was going to make out of them, out of nothing. He was going to make them great and mighty men. That is what every pastor is supposed to be doing. That's supposed to be the intention and the purpose of going to ministry, pastoral ministry, or any form of ministry. That is the very intention that's supposed to be in the heart of every leader. That's a kingdom leader in this kingdom. If you are a leader, if you are a kingdom leader, you should be thinking of how to make everybody that is following you a great man, a great woman. You are the one that is responsible to rear that person, to cultivate that person, to, you know, to, to develop that person until that person that man and woman become great greater than what they could ever dream of greater than they could ever imagine that is the responsibility that is upon us as leaders so Jesus knew what he wanted for these people. He didn't just go to call them for his purpose. He didn't just go to call them for his vision. He was calling them and he was giving them a vision right there. He was calling them and giving them a purpose right there. He was calling them and giving them a destiny right there. He was calling them and right there telling them the greatness that is waiting for them. How many of you who are leaders today? You don't need to be a pastor to do this. You could be a leader in business. You could be a leader, a Christian leader. You could be a leader in, a, in the church or anywhere. As an individual, if you are a believer, a Christian, and you call yourself a leader, you must be looking for people from that you are going to make into great men. Where are the great men? Where are the mighty men? We, they are nowhere to be found because we are not raising them up, because we are not creating them. If you are a believer, you are supposed to follow after the example of Jesus. Jesus was our model. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
He was our example. Jesus was our leader. We are supposed to model our life after him. We are supposed to copy what he's done. What he's done is our command. What he has done is our example. What he has done, the way he, had, he, he, he treated ministry, the way we are supposed to treat ministry. The way he treated people is the way we are supposed to treat people. So, if he is starting his ministry by having planned for people, if he is starting his ministry by thinking about the destiny of people, by thinking about the future of those people, by teaching, uh, by, by thinking about making them into mighty and great men already, even from the very first time he met them, that is what our own life is supposed to be about. Now, my question to you, who is there, whoever is there, is there? What plan and purpose and intention do you have? For people who are following you. What plan do you have to rear and raise up mighty men for God? Where is your plan to raise up mighty men? Where is your plan to raise up great men? Where are the great men that you are raising up? Where are the mighty men that you are raising up for God? Where are they? Where is your plan? Where is your agenda? What do you do for this? What, what are your plans? What are your purposes? What are your intentions? Where are you looking for them? Where are you raising them? Where are you teaching them? Where are you nurturing them? Where are you showing them the, the example? Where are your great men? As a follower of Jesus Christ, you are supposed to be raising some people who you should be telling, follow me. I mean, look at the confidence that Jesus had. Look at that confidence. Look at that confidence. He was saying, you know, you don't need to worry. You don't need to think about what you have or what you don't have. You don't need to tell me stories. I have talents. I don't have talents. I'm small. I don't have faith. I don't have money. I'm, I, don't, I was not born in the right family. I don't care your, what your background is. I don't care what you, you have or what you don't have. I don't care if you're a man, if you're a woman. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you lack. I just want to tell you one thing. If you follow me, if you follow me, if you follow me, if you follow me, I will make you somebody. What an assurance. What an assurance, my friend. What an assurance. What an assurance. Can you imagine if all pastors in the world today will be given that kind of assurance to everybody that is coming to their church that if you follow me, if you come to this church, I guarantee you that I will make something out of you. That if you follow me as a leader, if you follow me, if you come to this congregation, I am guaranteeing you, I am your guarantee that I will make somebody mighty out of you. And that is what I dare to say today. I dare to say today that I am starting a movement that is going to take me back to Africa and I'm taking together with me thousands of people from all over the world back to Africa. And I say anybody that would dare to follow me, anyone that would dare to follow me, I, I dare to say like Jesus, that if you will follow me, I, by the grace of God, I, by the power of God, I, by the might of God, I dare to guarantee you that I will make you, I will make of you somebody. I will make on you, on to, uh, on from you someone that God has created you to be by the grace of God. I, by the grace of God, I dare to say to you, if you follow me, anyone that would dare to follow me will become somebody that the world will live to remember. Anyone that would dare to follow me will become somebody that will leave his footprint on the side of on the sand of history. Anyone that would dare to follow me, follow me, and I will make you. Now, Jesus didn't say follow me and God will make you. No, he didn't put, put the responsibility on God. He just said. I will make you. I am your guarantee. I guarantee. Leave God alone. I am here. I am his representative. I am his image. I am his likeness. I am here. And if I'm here, God is here. God is in me. And because he's in me, I can guarantee you the result. That if you will follow me, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know my destiny. And I know anyone that will follow me like that is promised. A, so, a similar great destiny. Can you imagine if pastors begin to talk like that once again? Can you imagine what's begin to happen? Can you imagine if leaders begin to talk like that? Can you imagine if leaders begin to give guarantee and assurance of a destiny to every church member? 
And that's what I've done in Ukraine. That's what I've done in Ukraine, that anybody that ever comes across me and anybody that will ever follow me in Ukraine, if you want to do anything, if you want to become anything, but there are some people that totally don't want to become anything or they are not interested. They're just interested in, you know, their comfort. But if you really want to become somebody, if you really want to serve God, if you really want to realize and discover yourself and, 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 and fulfill your destiny, if you follow me, you, everybody in Ukraine, even they hate me, even they don't like me, even people who hate me will tell you that there is no human being in this country that has produced more leaders, more mighty, great men than Pastor Sunday. No church has produced, no movement, no denomination has produced uh, more, half of what we have produced. All the mighty men, they are coming from my bow world, from my womb, because that is the mentality that has shaped my ministry. Well, I've been living by that principle for the last 20 years of what Jesus said. I saw it. That Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. I know that that's the kind of leader I was supposed to be. I know that that's the kind of leader God is expecting all of us to be. Not just letting people follow us and we don't give them anything. We don't assure them anything. We don't help them to become anything. But I say, if anybody will follow me, I will make sure I become like Jesus. I help them to discover their destiny. I help them to become great in life. If they want, the only thing that I want from them is their desire. If they want and they are ready to say what I do, I mean to do what I say, everybody will become anything they have ever dreamed, dreamed about or even greater than they, they will ever dream about. So follow me and I will make you fishers of men. God, God is a maker of men. God is a maker of men. And he wants us to become makers of men as well. Jesus was a maker of men. And he wants us to become makers of men as well. So that's the order of God. This is how things are supposed to be working in the kingdom of God. These are how things are supposed to be in this kingdom. It's not a place where we're using people to build our own empire. It's not a kingdom where we're using other people to, to, to build our own ministry. It's not a place where we're using people to advance our own cause. It's a place where we, the, it's a kingdom that we are using our own talent, our own anointing, our own position as leaders to make sure that everybody that follows us becomes who God wants them to become. And our goal for them should be to make of them mighty men. Mighty men. So my preaching today, my message today is, where are the mighty men? And I started with the example of Jesus. Jesus' example was a great one. You know, he met these people who are nameless, faceless, unknown, ordinary people. They were just walking business people but they were not exceptional anyhow but jesus made them exceptional now the whole world is talking about them two thousand years later we are still reading about these people god had made them to become mighty men he fulfilled his promise to them how many mighty men will you raise in your lifetime how many mighty men will you raise in your lifetime how many mighty men will you raise in your lifetime? Don't wait till you become a pastor. Don't wait till you become an apostle. Don't wait till somebody ordains you. Arise. Arise now. And begin to say, I'm going to become like my master. I'm going to become like my father. I'm going to become like my savior. I'm going to live like Jesus. I'm going to act like Jesus. I'm going to behave like Jesus. He made people to follow him, not for the sake of it. He made people to follow him, not for his own sake. He made people to follow him, not for his own gain. He made people to follow him because he was thinking about their destiny. He wanted to raise them up so that they might become mighty men that would do mighty things for God. Are you dedicating yourself to make people follow you so that you could help them to become mighty men who will do mighty things for God? That is why the kingdom of God is suffering. That's why the kingdom of God is not multiplying at, as, at the fast rate as we would have liked it to be. Because we are not raising up mighty men that could multiply the kingdom. That could multiply God's righteousness. That could multiply God's principles. That could actually expand the kingdom of God. We are not dedicated as a purpose, as a matter of intention to raising up, to developing, to helping, and you know, just producing men like this the church has missed it 
The church has lost the way. We don't copy our master anymore. This is the order of God that we will become like him. As he was in the earth, that is how we are supposed to be in now. Now, I don't have great example about this, about mighty men raising up, mighty man raising up mighty men. It's the story of David, you see. The story of David is so fascinating. I like that story. I like that story of David. Now, the story of David in the book of First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 22, First Samuel chapter 22 from verses 1. You see an interesting illustration there. David, therefore, he says from verse 1, David, therefore, departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone, look, so Jesus, I mean, sorry, David was in trouble himself. Don't wait until things become better for you before you begin to raise up other people. Don't wait the thing, the, till things are good for you before you begin to raise other people. Don't wait the, the, till when things are all right, when you begin to make your money or when you become a pastor. Don't wait till when somebody anoints you or appoints you or does something for you before you begin to raise up other people or because you begin to think about raising up mighty men. The, no matter the state where you are, if you have the heart to raise up people, if you had the heart to, write, to help people, if you have that in your heart, if you are really having the heart to help God, to serve God, to live for God, to increase His kingdom, to work for the growth and multiplication of His kingdom and of His righteousness, if you have a heart for God, if God's vision is your passion, if God's burden is your life, if God's purpose and intention is, is your preoccupation, if you really care for God, you will not begin to give excuses, oh, well, I don't have time right now, or I don't have money, or nobody has anointed me, or they have not prayed for me, or I'm nobody myself. If you are really concerned for God's concerns, you sh sh should begin to do something from wherever you are. In this case, we see that David was in a very bad crisis. You know, you know, Saul was running after him. You know, people were running after him. They were, he was running for his life. He needed to even save his life. And in the midst of all that, all that people that were in a worse situation, in a worse circumstance than him, they started coming to him. He ran away. He was running for his life. He was running away to save his life, to you know, save God himself somehow. And that same time, people who believed in him or people who were in crisis as well who didn't know where Toronto, they ran after him. So that what's happening is uh, Jesus, I mean David, escaped and he was hiding in a cave, in the cave of Adullam. So when the people who believed in him, who were following him, they heard about this. His family members first, his friends, his family members followed him to that cave to hide together with him. And while they were there, other people, everyone who was distressed, we want what distress means, they were in depression. They were so bad. Things were bad for them, big time. You know what we do sometimes with people who, who are in distress, who are in depression? We run away from them. We try to avoid them because we think, oh, I have my own problem enough. These people are going to add to my problem. You know, you know I'm t <laughs> I have enough of my problem. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we send them away or we try to escape from them we try to hide from people who we think have challenges not Jesus those people that he meant that you know, they were having crisis some of those disciples they, I mean, they had their nets broken and they were frustrated as well they, they, you know, they, you know, they were not cashing anything and they were about to give up and these were people in distress in depression so also was the situation with David you know, the people that came to him, they were not doing well. But most churches today, they are looking for people who are doing well. They are looking for people who are well to do. They are looking for people who are doing good. They are looking for people who could give tight. They are looking for people who could give offering. They are looking for people who could add to them, not people they could add to. And that's a problem.
You will never raise mighty men if you are just looking for people who are well to do. That's the problem. You will never raise mighty men if you are not looking for people to add something to, to give something to. If you are looking for people who already resolve their problems, they will never become committed to you. But if you look for people who are dis distressed, if you look for people who are down and out, like David looked for, if you look for people like Jesus look for, people who are helpless, people that you ask something to, they will be committed to you <clears throat> sooner or later when because they know who they were. They know they were nobody. They know they were at a loss. They know they were losers. And they know that it's only thanks to you that they became who they became. So if you will be able to invest yourself in people, no, no, no matter what they have, no matter their status, especially the ones that think that they don't deserve anything, when you invest yourself in them, when you beg them somebody, they will remember where they are coming from. And they will be grateful and they will be ready to go and sacrifice themselves and really give their lives to, and to pay the price that they would need to pay to become mighty men as well. So, so these people that came to Jesus, I mean, to, 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 to David, were not men that were well off. They were not men that could pay tithe and offering. <laughs> Look at it. They were men that were depressed. depressed in this, they were in distress. They were in debt. They were in debt. And that, that they were discontented. There were people that were having some crisis or the other in their lives. And they were in debt as well. They didn't have money. They were in minors. So he gathered them and became their leader. So he became captain over them. So don't be afraid of looking and taking care of people who are in need. Don't be afraid of, you know, because sometimes we say, but I don't have anybody following me. Nobody is following me. I don't have anybody following me. Go look for people who are in trouble. That's the lesson God taught me in Ukraine. God told me, go, go to the down and out. Go to the down and out. And, you know, go, don't look for people who are already doing well. That's the problem that we have sometimes. We used to think, we, you know, we are, we are expecting people who are doing well to follow us. Go look for the down and out. The down and out don't have any option. They, if they only follow anybody who proposes them to follow. So, but if people have choices, then, you know. They have their choice and they don't want to follow you because they have their own agenda, they have their own plan and things like that. But the biggest result you will ever get in life is when you care for the distress, for the down and out, for the people who don't have anywhere to go. When you give their life to these kind of people, they will turn back and become your great men and become your mighty men. Don't wait until you become a pastor. Don't wait until you become a leader. You can raise up mighty men in business. You can raise up mighty men in industry. You are we are all supposed to be raising up men in industry, in entertainment, in uh, media, in finances, in, in politics. Everywhere we are supposed to give our lives to raising up mighty men that will be able to make a difference for God and that will be able to change the world for the, for the, to, 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 to the glory of God. So... But the better you, you, the, the, those people are, uh, the lower they are, or the worse circumstances they are, that is the better for you. You will be able to give them life, to, like, your life to, 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 to for them, and you'll be able to make them to become somebody, and then they will turn ahead and you the greatest of fruit for you. So these people who are, you know, who are distressed, who are in debt, who are discontented, they, I mean, all kind of rubbish, all kind of, you know, or problematic people. They gathered around Jesus and Jesus began, I mean, they gathered around David and David began to train them. He began to teach them. He, he was doing just like Jesus. And Jesus had not come this time. But, you know, the kingdom of David and the kingdom of Solomon, they were a, 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 a symbol of things to come. They were like a shadow of the kingdom of God. And this was why God allowed that to happen. God was teaching us something through their lives as a shadow. And so he, he, he began to train these people. And there were 400 of them. But the most important thing, though, is not what, what uh, uh, or, you know, the fact that he was able to take them and was teaching them and being a captain to them. You know, listen closely. They, because some, a lot of people are also pastoring people and we are leading people. But that is not the, the thing we want. We want the end result. What is the end result of the people you are going to be leading? We know the end result of the disciples of Jesus that he came to call the, that they will become fishers of men. The end result is that the, from fisher of fish, they will become fisher of men. And we saw the end result. Peter, we know who Peter is. 
We know who Paul is. We know who Andrew is. We know who Jacob is. We know who all the disciples are. They became great men and mighty men as well. Because what Jesus decided to do for them, he did. And he made them into. Sometimes we are just enjoying the process. Oh, I'm pastoring. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. I'm faithfully pastoring. God will reward me. God knows how he will reward. We don't know who he will raise. Well, at least the most important thing that I'm trying my best. I'm faithful. I'm trying my best. So now God should, we will he knows who to raise. You are supposed to be purposeful. <laughs> you are supposed to be serious, purposeful, intentional about the end result that you want to have. Jesus was intentional about the end result that he wanted to have. He didn't want them to be fisher, fisher of fish. He wanted them to be fisher of men. What is the goal you want? He wanted to be, them to be mighty men. So he had a goal. He had an agenda for them. And he made them. To, if, you don't, if the goal that you have before you is what you will get. So if you want to just make them members... That's what you get. If you just want to bring them tight, tighters and givers, that's what you will get. But if you want to make them mighty men, let's see how, how David did this. So, you know, these people, remember, they came to him so distressed, in debt, discontented, di you know, disorganized, disoriented. They didn't know what they were doing. So he gathered them, taught them, gave them vision. Because when you are telling people, follow me, I will make you fish as men, you are giving them vision. You are casting vision for them. You are helping them to discover their purpose. You are helping them to discover their fulfilled, no, their, 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 their calling in life. That's what Moses did. I mean, that's what David did. And see what the result David got? You will not believe that. This is amazing. You know, if I, I mean, if you have your Bible, you might want to read it maybe now or later on. Go, you go and read from 2 Corinthians chapter 23. I mean, not, not Corinthians, sorry. Second Samuel, verse chapter 23. Second Samuel, chapter 23. Second Samuel, chapter 23. And then from verses 8 there, you will see that those 400 people, those 400 people that were distressed, those 400 people that were depressed, those 400 people that were in debt, those 400 people that were disoriented, they later became the mighty men of David. They were the same people from that, those group of nonchalant, you know, you know, disoriented people. They had this where he now got the people who are the core of his kingdom. They were now his war warriors. They were now his men of war. They were now his generals. They were now the ones that were, you know, he was relying on to build a kingdom, the new kingdom of Israel. The people that people are despising today. The people that the world is looking down on today. The people that everybody is thinking they will never be anyone today. If you will give your life to them, if you will give them a purpose, if you will give, give them a goal, if you will give them, a, 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 you know, if you cast vision before them and give your life to making them to become mighty men of God. That just like David, from the distressed, from the oppressed, from the disadvantaged, disori dis disoriented, and the, the, you know, down and out, he made mighty men. He produced mighty men. So my message today is, where are the mighty men? Where are the mighty men on the earth today? Where are the mighty men of the kingdom? Where are the mighty men of the church? Nobody is producing them. That's the problem. We are all supposed to arise today and begin to dedicate ourselves to producing these mighty men. And, uh, you know, people who know me know that these days, I don't go to conferences to preach. I don't go to church to preach. I'm only producing men. I'm only raising, dedicated myself to raising mighty men. I am having training all the time, training, training, training. I started what we call HMT, History Makers Training, just to raise up men. And that's what I want to use my life to do, to raise up mighty men. The world is in need of mighty men. And success is only, is only true success. When it's not just by what you can do. True success is not defined not just by what, by what you can do or could accomplish by yourself, but what could be accomplished by those people that you have raised up, those people who come after you, those people that follow you. That is re real success. That is real greatness. So anyway, let's see in chapter uh, uh, 23 of Second Samuel, Second Samuel 23, from verses 8. Let's see what those people became. Those people who are distressed, who are, you know, disoriented, you know, disorganized and in, in debt and in burden. What, who did they become? In that, from verse 23, it says, these are the names of the mighty men. That's where I got my message from. Where are the mighty men? 
from being distressed, from being oppressed. They are now, they are no more being called oppressed. They are no more being called depressed. They are no more being called dejected. They are no more being called outcasts. They are no more being called down and out. They are now being called, these are the, the mighty men of David. They are now being called mighty. How many people will be called mighty because of your investment? How many people will become mighty from being dejected and depressed? Through your efforts and thanks to you. How many mighty will you raise? How many people whose destiny will be transformed thanks to your efforts? How many people will become fishers of men coming from fishers of fish? How many of them will get a transformed destiny and a mighty fulfilled promise on their destiny? Verse 8 says, These are the names of the mighty men of David. That it makes me proud for David. It will make you proud. These are the followers. These are the sons. These are the four disciples of David, of Sunday. These are the men that Sunday have raised, has raised. These are the men, the how these are the these are the houses that God has built through Sunday. And that's why I said to the earlier on, I don't know if you if you heard me or not. I said, anybody I make and you are this is being recorded and this is going to all countries in the world right now and in anybody that is listening to you it will be going to generations anybody that will ever follow me anybody that will ever follow me will become somebody there is no way you will follow me and not become somebody follow me that's what Jesus said and I will not God will make you high I will make you sometimes it sounds like pride Ooh, wow I'm scared Wow, maybe God should make them, you know, that looks a little bit more at least. They will not think you are proud. But God was not, Jesus was not bothered. Jesus was not bothered. He was not saying, well, follow me, God will make you. Follow. No, no, I will make you. It will only, only those kind of leaders you want to follow who know exactly what they intend for you, only who know exactly what they plan for you, who know exactly what they can do, who are sure of themselves. And that's why I'm telling you, anybody, I'm now scattering a team. I'm now gathering a team of 2,000 people to go back with me to Africa to build and reconstruct Africa. We are going to regenerate Africa. We are going to raise Africa again. I will do it. And I know how to do it. Even if nobody is going to follow me, I'm going to do it anyway. But as many as will follow me, listen closely, I will make men, to, uh, all of them, to become somebody. To become somebody that God has called them to become. I follow, you, follow me and I will make you fish out of men. I will make you, any one of you that is following me, you will become somebody that you even never dreamt you could become. There is no way you will follow me. And it's not pride. It's not pride. Believe me, I've done it before. This is my life. This is the characteristics. This is the hallmark of my ministry in Ukraine here. That everybody that will ever follow Pastor Sunday, they will become something. There is no way you can follow me and not become. Because I live by that principle of Jesus that I'm teaching to you today. And I'm following that same principle that David applied. You if you follow me, there is no way you will not become somebody. But you have to follow. And then you have to listen. You have to obey. The only thing that will make you not to become is if you don't want. But if you follow me, follow. With Jesus too, those who followed him, he made to become somebody. And those who followed David, he made to become. They used to be, they, they used to be you, know, you know, in debt and distress and outcast, but you are no more. They, now, they have now become. These are the names of the mighty men. Of David. Now, Joseph became the chief among the captains who will become the chief among captains that you have raised up. He was called Adino the Ends Knight because he had killed 800 men at one time. That is how he became a mighty man. And what is the feat that will be accomplished by the people you have raised? What who have you raised to conquer the to, to, to conquer the, 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 the world of the world of commerce? Who have you raised to conquer the world of money? Who have you raised to conquer the world of industry? Who have you raised to conquer the world of politics? Who are will you raise to conquer the world of the economy, commerce? Who will you raise to conquer the world of youth? Who will you raise to conquer the world of women? Who will you raise to conquer the world the world of girls, the, the the world of you know, you know, teaching, church, the world of media, the world of entertainment? Men, the word of sports. Who are you raising? Who will you raise? What will you dedicate your life to? What will your life produce? Where are the mighty men that will come out of your bosom? And then another one. After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, 
one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle, and the men of Israel has retreated, he arose. Who will raise up men that will face challenges of our world? Who will rise up to HIV AIDS? Who will rise up to conquer, to challenge it and say, I will produce the result in the name of Jesus? Who will rise up in the world of technology and say, we are going to bring civilization and development of our nation to our continent? Who will say, I rise up against corruption? We are going to put a stop to this corruption in the name of Jesus. Who will rise up and say, we rise up to poverty? We are going to cause poverty to cease in Jesus' name. Who will rise up and any kind of challenge that is in the land, mighty men are the ones who confront them. What makes mighty men mighty is that they don't scare, they don't run away. They are not scared by the challenges of their days and their generation. They arise to face these challenges. They take on challenges. They take on enemies. They take on thousands of them and they single handedly defeat and leave their name in the history. They, what the challenge, all the so and no more, so many challenges facing our generation today. It takes one man. A mighty man to arise against cancer and say, I'm going to find a cure for cancer in my generation. I'm going to give my life to cure cancer. Even if I die in the process, and other people are going to come who will follow my, my work and continue my work and make sure that they find a, a cure for cancer or anything like that. You know, but that's what mighty men do. Mighty men arise and challenge the problems of their generation. They arise and bring solution to the problems of, the, of, the, of, the, of their time. So the problem of the time of, of Joseph was to stop the Philistines. And he rose and did that. He killed 800 in one day. The, the challenge of the generation of Eleazar was to, you know, to, 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 to when everybody else was running, running away, he was to stand and refuse to retreat and defeat the enemy. And he did just that. Then the, 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 after that, we have Shammah, the son of Hage. When the Philistines came in the, into the troop, it, yeah, they gathered together with their troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines, but he stationed himself in the, in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. So a yeah, man, one single man, that's what mighty men do. Mighty men single handedly raise up, they, they know how, they single handedly take responsibility to resolve any challenge of their time. They single handedly stand and raise up generation of people. They raise up their own army to face and conquer that problem that is come to their, to, 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 to their generation. They single handedly arise and raise, build a structure to resolve. Just like, just like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a mighty man in, in the world of, in the world of, in, in of computer. He said, I'm going to make sure that a tablet, uh, a uh, Microsoft, you know, pro computer. Everybody has a computer in, in his generation, and he did it. I, uh, Steve Jobs said he's going to make sure that everybody, uh, you know, buys a iPad, iPad, and he did it. So people are, you know, that is exactly what mighty men do. That you know, Bill Gates says I'm going to stop my, uh, Polo all over the world, and he stopped it now. This is what mighty men do. What, where are your mighty men? Where are you going to be mighty? Where are you going to be known as mighty? And when are you, who are you raising to be mighty? Are you raising your children to be mighty men? Are you raising your spiritual children to be mighty men? Who is following you? Because who are you mentoring? Who are you training to become mighty men? Then it goes on and on. This, this whole list goes on. This whole chapter of Second Samuel chapter 23, you will see what mighty men really mean. And Jesus started it, David did it, and other people in the Bible, they raised up mighty men. It is time for us to begin to not to make God ashamed anymore, to stop the shame on the church, to stop the disgrace on the name of God, and to begin to raise up mighty men for God. That will make God proud. That will make the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdom of our Lord and His Christ. Well, my time is uh, up. I need to hear you. I need to hear all of you. So please write what you think about this message and that, write what you are thinking, what you are feeling, what you are experiencing as you hear this message and what, you, what your solution, your resolutions are, what your decisions are about the message you are hearing. So I need to hear what should people think about this message. Um, please write it and I'm going to be reading that. But while I'm reading, I want to challenge everyone 
to also go and share the link if you have not shared the like, the link yet. Bobo said it is because the focus is more on being served rather than serving others. Jesus came to serve and not to be served, right? Candy says, "Oh Lord, help me to raise mighty men." Unwosu said, "I pray that God raises me early enough to raise others early enough because I must have mightiness to give mightiness." Yes. Ernest Ebong says, don't wait until things are good with you before you begin to raise people. Yes. Oladapo says, many Jonas in our churches, they are being reindoctrinated from being a leader to go bring muscles into a loyal servant. Yes. That is the problem. That's one of the greatest problems in our church, churches today. Instead of raising men to become mighty men on their own, to take their own territories, to take their own spheres of influence, to become kings and lords in their own territories. We are indoctrinating them and telling them, you have to be loyal to me. I am the mighty man. I am the only one here. I am the king. I am the hero. We are building kingdom of slaves. We put them as pastors, but they must be committed to me, to my own vision, not to their own vision. They must not go to conquer their own promised land, and we are trying to frighten them through the word of you have to be loyal, you, are, you shouldn't be a rebel, you shouldn't, uh, you know, be in this division, and all kind of rubbish, all kind of satanic doctrines that have invaded the church. And we are think, and people are living for these doctrines and spreading these doctrines, and we are not even aware that they are satanic. It is manipulation. It is it's not the spirit of Christ to make people not to have their own vision, to make people to be dedicated more to you rather than to their own promised land. It is demonic, and I'm very ashamed of these good people, really, who are spreading those kind of news. Charles Ushe says, you will never raise mighty men if you are looking for people to add to you. Yes, but if you are ready to receive, you never give. You are not a giver. Orekoya says, unfortunately, most churches are... Okay, she's, she's uh, responding. to someone else. Didi says, I want to be a reflection of you, Jesus. I want to be like you, Lord. I'm giving myself all for you, Lord, for the growth of your kingdom. Brilliant, brilliant. Candy says, too much politics in churches today, and that's so sad. May God have mercy. Charles Ushe said, the biggest result you will ever get in life is when you care for those who are down and out. Yes. If uh, Divine says, if nobody is following you, go look for people who are in trouble. Yes, that's the key. Raphael says, God bless you, sir, for this comment. I will put it in the back of my head and care for those who are in distress. Thank God. Bobo says, unfortunately, in the church today, people are just looking for membership instead of releasing people to the world that is suffering. Ayodeji says, I'm passionate about helping the needy orphans in Africa for a very long time, but I'm unable to start the project because of these negative reports I was getting from people I discuss my vision with in Africa. I'm being encouraged to do something about this vision whenever I listen to Pastor Sunday. Oladapo says, it's rather the opposite today. We are killing the mighty men today in our churches. <laughs> <laughs> so the churches have become a place of killing mighty men, not raising mighty men. <laughs> Nkem says, give them a reason to live and see the great potentials in them. Yes. Divine says, add value to yourself and then invest in other people because you can give only what you have. Yes. Brenda says, most churches are not ready to invest in people. They want people ready-made, <laughs> rich, holy, prim, and proper.
Okay. Nkem says, love the boldness you speak with. Thank you. <laughs> Ladi says, now I know why I'm going through the challenges I'm going through so that I can meet Pastor Sunday. Oh, I'm being energized to become mighty man. Hallelujah. Raphael says, bless you, sir. More anointing to you. Your teaching is divine inspirational and I'm blessed glory to God <laughs> thank you Fleur Fleur is saying no doubt pastor you are a great man divine says broken people are great materials and vessels to invest in as they never forget where God has picked them from yeah I need to hear your decisions man Bobo says, very deep teaching. It is yet another message for those on meat, not meal, not on milk. Pastor, you touch on critical issues which are so important for the current season. Those of us who are privileged to hear your teachings and do nothing about it, we amount to disobedience. Thank you, Pastor, for your passion for the kingdom is contagious. Kazim says, we are only permitted to reproduce after our kind because we cannot give what we don't have. It takes only mighty men to raise up other mighty men. Didi says, Lord, help me be a mighty man who will raise up mighty men for you to make you proud. Lopez says, Sir, my burden about this project is <laughs> did you contact other men of God that you, you can work with? Don't worry about that. That's my own problem. It shouldn't be your concern. You care for your own concern. Nkem says, my decision is to follow you, sir, in your full step to get the results you have. Look out for opportunities to help those who are in a position not to pay me back, but who will arise to become great. Yes, brilliant. Irene says, Pastor, please give us some tips for raising mighty men. But not today. <laughs> you are getting all the tips every day. Everything you get today is a tip. Divine says, God told me to be a minister. I have resolved to raise mighty men of ministry by adding more value to myself. I have to start looking for people to invest in. Tai says, I think that this is a great opportunity to the body of Christ to rise, to raise in training national champions to rule in governments of nations. Nikki says, Pastor, your daily teaching has been a lot of enlightenment to a lot of us. People's life, both young and old, surely it's a word of wisdom you are passing to us. You made me realize not just uh, you made me realize not just working and paying bills. I need to add value to my generation, great legacy, and even most unbelievers, their legacy remains even after, as they have long way gone. People still remember and mention their name for the good things they did. Your teaching is waking me up more and more, not to procrastinate. I think your teaching today has given birth to the next president of a nation. Mm. Amen. Michael says, I got confirmation that I'm not crazy thinking you can follow the Holy Spirit than waiting on others to do the will of God. Also learn that by raising mighty men, you spread the kingdom of God. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you. That is from Michael Berhan. Kazim says, I'm a professional, and by God's grace, I have raised up 33 men that are now gainfully employed in my own field. I currently have a vision to raise up at least 200 mighty men within the next two years in my field. This message has challenged me and to keep developing myself and adding value to people. Great, great. <laughs> John says, please come quickly to Nigeria. We are waiting for you here. Magnus says, Pastor, when I met your mighty men, when I met your mighty men while I was in Kiev, Ukraine, it changed my mindset forever. Please, sir, could you have a special program on this forum 
when some of your mighty men could come online. Ooh, okay, we're going to start with Pastor Pastor Derek tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to start with Pastor Derek tomorrow. Could come, come online. That's a good idea. Uh, yes. Please, sir, uh, could you have a special program on this forum when some of your mighty men could come online with you to share their testimonies? Most people may not understand fully until they see what you have produced out of nothing. Just as you said in one of your books, if you are good for nothing, come and I will. Uh, if you are good for nothing, come and I will make you good for something. Yes, <laughs> if you are good for nothing, come and I will make you good for something. That's what I wrote in my book. Ladi says, it is clear to me now that the promise God gave me 26 years ago that I will become mighty man of God is about to come to pass. Amen. Scott says, my role is to follow Jesus Christ and it will make me fisher of men, okay? Obi says, thank you, sir. You are a mighty man because you raise up a lot of leaders like me and today I'm raising other leaders. We all shall be mighty men. Okay, you see, that's another one. Adebayo say, my success in life depends on the number of people that I've invested, I've invested my life in and accomplished. Uh, yeah. Oluwa Yomi say, thank you, Pastor. The church, a place to raise mighty men of valor, valor, a place where kings and priests are made, a place where leaders are made and sent forth. May God help the church to rediscover destiny. Yeah, you are right. Oluwayomi say, thank you, Pastor. The church is a place of raising mighty men. Okay, I think I read that. Oladapo says, uh, if God should open up the minds and nature of men in our churches, everyone will be locked up in a correction facility. <laughs> Oluwayomi says, Amen. I'm no longer a slave to religion. The church has taught me religion, but now I know the truth. I am a mighty man of valor to take territories for the kingdom of God. Inyak says, God bless you, Pastor, for this lovely message. I pray that this message uh, will make an impact in our country. We are mighty men in our nation. God bless you, Pastor. This is a challenging message to me. We are waiting for you to come over to the Caribbean. Okay, thank you. Okay, Aline said, do you have something in Quebec, Canada? I have someone from Canada here with me. I will introduce him to you tomorrow as one of my mighty men that I'm raising up. So he will be able to speak to you tomorrow. So I challenge you, who is that? Christine, uh, Aline, Aline to, to, to be here in the morning tomorrow. I mean, that's my time tomorrow. You can't do that to me. Anyway, the next program, the, uh, the, you know, you have to be here. You will hear you, well, a Canadian talk to you as well. So, and then, um, yeah. So, you know, it's a good idea that I should get my sons to come here sometimes and for people to see the result. I, these are not just talking, but, you know. Anyway, the time is over. Please go share the link. For this message, go spread the word and we'll be back tomorrow morning. God bless. Bye.